All of this boils down to one thing. There's a whole lot of cheating going around. Full-fledged, highly qualified scientists who are true, bona fide, cheats. Here's one of the many examples of scientists who cheat. British archaeologist Louis Leakey said, when creating the hoax of the East Africa man, spoke in the true fashion of NASA about their moon missions. If there weren't a homo habilis, we would have to invent one. In the case of the Nebraska man hoax, the visuals of his entire family was drawn from one single tooth. One single tooth. And the artist was able to visualize what his entire family looked like from this. This is the similar insult received from John F. Kennedy's single bullet theory. In any case, it was later discovered that the tooth belonged to a pig. It wasn't even a tooth that belonged to a human. So, where did the artist, Miss Amele Forestier, draw her inspiration from? The answer to that lay cradled in the constructive lie, in the belief that the hoax is true. Dr. Dewan Gish commented on the plight of the Nebraska man hoax. He said, I believe this is a case in which the scientist made a man out of a pig and the pig made a monkey out of the scientist who was, all along, the monkey's uncle. <coughs> anyway, here is a clip of American researcher Michael Cremo on evolution scientists who cheat. Uh, you have talked in terms of the uh, fact that scientists don't cheat. That's a myth. You say there's actual cheating going on. Oh, that's very well documented. For example, the, the Piltdown case is a very famous case that documents that. Now, what that has to do with is early in this century, uh, there was a purported discovery of an ape man in England uh, based on a skull and a jawbone. And this Piltdown man, Piltdown ape man, was in the science textbooks for about 40 years. And then uh, suddenly it was revealed that the British Museum had tested these fossils and determined that it was a very elaborate hoax. And many people have speculated about the identity of the person who was the hoaxer. And practically all of them center on different scientists in England, such as Sir Grafton Elliot Smith or Sir Arthur Smith Woodward, uh, all very well-established scientists in England, because only somebody who, who knew the scientific ver method very well could have prepared these fossils in such a way that they would have fooled the scientific community all around the world for 40 or 50 years. So some scientist who wanted to perhaps give some evidence in favor of evolution, because there's not very much of it, uh, invented this ape man and in a very sophisticated way uh, cheated. He'll cry and cry and try to sleep, but sleep won't come the whole night through. Your cheating heart will tell. And yet, they keep infiltrating the children's classrooms with pictures such as these. This is rogue science, under the white hood of a real fanatical religion. Atheism. Slash. Eugenics. Listen to the words of Dick Dawkins, in this next scene. You will observe, 
that they have the exact familiar ring, as in the rites of a satanic ritual. And the fine line between Darwinism and Satanism is simply never detected. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. Instead of naturally being the sound, scientist, with logical explanation, of things he would come up with, he launches attacks on the God of the Bible, with a religious fervor, akin, to the zealots of yore. My friends, this is far removed from science, and there seem to be a grander scheme of things. Yes, a grander scheme of things, that actually need, spelling out. It is now, time to play the next video as we have come to the end of this chapter. I thank you.